Look at that. That's something you don't usually get in PSVR without doing all this. You can't usually see your controller sitting on the ground and just grab them. Like, usually you put them on the ground and they are gone. Here we go, look at that. We got very little hand wobble, very little. Green lights make a big difference. I can drop all the way down here and go all Boondock Saints style on them. And I can actually use my cover. See how much easier it is to kill people, kids, when your tracking actually works? Hey Bratz, welcome back to the channel and today we are talking about PSVR tracking. Now PSVR gets a bad rep because of its tracking. The tracking design is old, but something that I've seen over the past several years in owning one is that people think the tracking is terrible when really it can actually be pretty good. Through a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of work, you can get your PSVR tracking to be pretty near perfect, at least in the 180 degrees, as long as you stay facing forward. Obviously it's only one camera. We can't get a 360 out of it. We've tried, but the only time really you should be having real tracking problems is if you turn around and you get the controller completely behind you. Otherwise, you should be able through these steps to get a great tracking experience, great gaming experience with PSVR, and really get to enjoy it without having to constantly worry about your tracking being a problem. So as far as the steps go, I'm gonna start off with the easiest, either either free or least expensive steps and work my way up to the more complex, difficult, or expensive steps. Now what I'd recommend, if you really wanna go through and do all 10, try and get that bulletproof tracking, go for it. But otherwise, try each step. And if you get to a point where you see, okay, this is exactly the tracking I need. It's working really well in my space. Then awesome. You can stop there as each step progresses and you can go play games. Otherwise, stick with me for all 10 and we'll have some examples at the end. I'll do some gaming and stuff and show where the tracking really shines if you really go through all these steps. So let's dive on in. 10 steps. Here we go. Number 10, camera placement. So camera placement is extremely important for more than one reason. One, it's gonna determine what exactly part of the play area that people are gonna be utilizing. So it's gonna determine if your camera's facing towards windows, if it's facing towards light sources, it's gonna determine the amount of work you're gonna have to do there. And two, typically they recommend just putting it right on top of the TV. It's how the camera mount's supposed to fit right on top. Well, as you'll see, <laughs> it's very dangerous to mount top of your TV because the PSVR doesn't really warn you when you get too close to the camera. So the camera's on top of the TV, you can walk right up to the TV and end up punching the TV before you have any warning and destroying a TV. Well, you're in the way. My living room with my setup, I actually decided to go on an opposing wall because it squares up the play space that they're going to have in the living room. It still is closer to the TV than I would like it to be, but what can you do? I, I only have so much wall space, so the wall kind of ends right there. And then on the other side, there is no wall because it goes down over the stairs. So the placement is going to be first and most important step as to what's going to determine your play area and how your tracking is going to work there. Number nine, camera height. The next most important thing is going to be the actual height of your camera. So in my setup, I've got the camera actually mounted to the wall because pretty much anything we do in the living room socially is standing VR. We almost never sit in the living room. So you wanna have a couple different options. Almost all games do better with a camera about one foot above whatever height your head of your PSVR headset's gonna be. There's a couple of reasons for that. A major one is if you're playing a shooter or any game where you have your hands in front of you, so you could be physically blocking those by looking down that. So if you have the camera above you, what that does is that you're looking down the sights, you're holding something in front of you, it's still gonna be able to differentiate from that angle where your controllers are and where your headset is separate from that. The other reason that camera height is really important to have slightly above you is when my experience, almost all games work better with the camera slightly above you due to tracking and it gives it more coverage. So it can see down, it can actually see if you're crouching down, you're reaching down with the controllers. Instead of having it head on, you only have this small frame if you reach down. If it's looking down at you, you can actually reach down and grab something off the ground. Something when I helped my friend set up his PSVR because he wanted to have it in the living room, but also be able to sit on the couch and play or stand for more active games. He had a selfie stick. This is actually a GoPro stick, but same principle here. He had an old selfie stick and what we did, his TV is a lot lower than mine. It's on a normal stand, it's not on this high one. We mounted the selfie stick behind the TV. And then that way, what you could do is you could lift up your camera to where it was up above the TV for standing. You could lower it just down to TV height for when you were sitting playing. And then when you weren't playing at all, you could actually push that out of you and it would hide completely behind the TV. So most people probably have an old selfie stick laying around they have never used or never will use. It actually can be a really good purpose for an old selfie stick to repurpose it. 
Number eight, clean your camera. After all this handling of the camera, one of the next most important step, just clean those lenses. Once you have it where you want it to be, make sure you wipe those off. The included PSVR cleaning cloth is great. Any lint-free sort of glasses clean cloth. Because if you left any sort of greasy fingerprints on there, you're gonna risk new tracking issues you didn't even have before. Number seven, cover your windows. Now the next step here, we're gonna actually start assessing what our environment is like for tracking. So pull the PlayStation button, when you have your PSVR already turned on, go to adjust PlayStation VR and confirm your position. Now this takes it into a negative screen where you can actually see where light sources are coming from. So you wanna make sure, usually even just blinds aren't gonna be enough. I use blinds and curtains to get rid of all the light coming in. So now we're gonna to wanna to go around and we're gonna to wanna to cover up any sort of windows, any heavy sources of light and make sure they're no longer showing up on the screen to the best of our ability. And like I said, blinds still aren't enough. You can see a lot of smear coming in through there. So hopefully most of you don't have your camera somewhere facing directly at windows. With the situation in my living room, it was just kind of the only really functional way to have this set up. But this may be a step you can skip if you don't have any windows in the way. And now those are all double covered up and don't have enough light coming through to mess things up. Number six, turn off lights in the zone, turn down other lights. Step six, a continuation of assessing your environment. Now you need to see if there's any sort of light sources in the way. So we wanna make sure that if there's any light sources directly in front of the camera, we turn those off. Ideally what you want is dim lighting, but not no lighting. Because when you have absolutely no lighting, you risk the controllers bleeding more onto your clothing like this. They can bleed on there, they can bleed on other surfaces, they can bleed onto your face with absolutely no light, you risk that. So you want lights that are all coming from outside of the camera's view. So now you can see on the PSVR screen here, these balls are very easy for it to see, very easy for it to track, and there's almost no light smear. Now, these track really nicely. There's nothing to get in the way. We've got a dim ambient lighting coming at it. Number five, eliminate reflections. So next, you wanna eliminate any sort of reflective surfaces you have in the area. Now, luckily for me, the windows were the main one, but you wanna think about if you have paintings, if you have mirrors, if you have posters that are reflective, anything that essentially one of these lights could bounce off of in the background is gonna cause you severe heartache. I have a table that's got mirrors all over that I had in view that was actually causing me problems. Number four, check yourself. Now this one's a really random one, but it's come up enough on Reddit that people have seen a lot of real problems with this. So you need to think about what clothes you're using. This was a shirt, sleeveless shirt that I like to play Beat Saber because I get hot and sweaty and this wick moisture level, but it has a very reflective fabric to it. And when I was playing, I noticed that my tracking would wobble more and I'd have more issues with that. So think about what clothes you're wearing. If they're something that you see is reflective on camera or you just notice it casts a lot of light back off of it, it could actually be causing a problem. So think about what you're wearing. I know it's a really random and weird one, but a lot of people have found they were wearing something that messed it up, You know, especially if you have something with jewels all over the front of it. I know I love to play Beat Saber while I'll be jeweled, so hey, more power to you if that's causing you tracking problems, but stop wearing your jewels and that might actually help with your tracking. Number three, floor mat. Now, if you get out of the zone, you're obviously gonna lose tracking. So a really important step here is to find a mat that works for you. It can be a thick rug, it can be a yoga mat, it could be interlocking blocks that I'll show you what I typically use here, or there's some really cool options online. Uh, they're not cheap, but there's some cool ones because they not only show you where your play space is, but they have a grid on it so you can feel when you're facing forward, which is especially important for PSVR since you can't turn all the way around. What I've got here for this purpose, I've got some green interlocking mats here. And what you wanna do is you wanna set those in your play space and then test whether, whether I'm anywhere on this mat, will I be able to reach up, bend down, grab items and not lose tracking. So even right there, it's a little forward. I wanna be able to reach down and not lose tracking when I touch. This mat's gonna help me face forward too, because at least with this one, it has a tighter edge at the front. And typically what I do when I play on my legs is I'll just hang my toes off the very edge or my heels off the back. And then that way it's easy to stay face forward the way the direction that I should be for the camera. Number two, full recalibration. Before we get into this, I want to say a quick thank you to PSVR Frank's old channel. Before he basically retired and went to work with uh, First Contact, he 
put up this method, which does seem to make a big difference with tracking. So basically the PSVR is one of the few or only VR systems out there that uses light tracking. To program in the light tracking, you have to calibrate it into the camera. It can make a big difference as far as what kind of performance you're gonna see because most likely if you ever first set this up, you are probably holding the PSVR, it wasn't fully stable and it can change the experience for you. So I'm gonna take you through the steps on how to recalibrate this fully and what's gonna actually make that difference. So once you have your PlayStation and your PSVR turned on, you need to go up in the main menu to settings. From settings, you're gonna go down to devices. Devices, you're gonna go to PlayStation VR. And then in PlayStation VR, you're gonna go down to adjust tracking lights. And then VR headset. And this is gonna tell you do not put the VR on the VR headset, hold it in your hands. Something that's actually important to note here, the way that we're gonna try and do this tracking method is we're gonna try and have this completely still and in the frame. So depending on where you have your camera set up, this may be more difficult for some of you than for others. For me, I had to use my huge stuffed giraffe to get it up close enough to the camera. This method, when it was originally found out, it was said you could do this anywhere with your camera and then move your camera after. But for me, I've always found best results with putting it in front of the camera once the camera's finally set at least close to the position. So you can see here, I put a sticky note over one of the lights so that it doesn't start tracking it until I have it completely ready and in position. And it does take quite a bit of adjusting if you're using something soft and flexible like I am to try and get it exactly right. What you wanna have happen is once it, everything's in and tracked, you're gonna take off whatever you've done to obstruct one of the lights. I've used a sticky note here just on the front to obstruct the lights so that it won't start tracking until I'm ready for it to. And then once the lights are all in the zone, you pull that off it tracks and this is the part that's really important you want it to move on to step two and continue tracking without you having to move the headset again that perfectly still tracking is what's really important and then it's going to ask you to turn the headset 90 degrees if you have this on a table or something it's going to be easier to turn it 90 degrees in the same spot and it should just work or for me it had to take quite a bit of adjusting to get it at just the right angle since it was on top of a, chair, a giraffe which was also on top of chairs to reach the camera and then once you've got it in the perfect spot same thing remove that sticky note and then it's going to track all those lights the back two lights are kind of difficult. They can take quite a bit of adjusting to get them just right in the spot and then pull that sticky note off and let it track. And then lastly, just the reverse of the other 90 degrees you had done, so you have to turn the headset 90 more degrees. Same thing, I have the sticky note obstructing one light. And then once you get it in place, you can pull that sticky note off and finish up your tracking. Now your camera understands how to fully track your headset. It's all recalibrated and ready to move on to the very final step here if you're still seeing some tracking issues. Number one, switch your lighting. Very last step here and almost tuned, changing the color of your lighting. This is something that I've seen come up numerous times on Reddit and on other places before I tried, finally tried it myself. People said either extremely yellow or green lighting because None of the tracking uses those colors. The tracking is typically red and purple, pinkish, whatever you want to say. Uh, on the AIM controller, it, it doesn't use that. The headset, it's all blue. It doesn't use green lighting. So I can confirm from numerous times when I've forgotten to switch my lighting over, this is probably the biggest help in tracking. It's also potentially the most expensive depending on how you want to do it. If you just buy a few easy green light bulbs at the store, they're usually three or $4 a piece and put those in some of your lights, great. For me, I needed my living room to still be livable, but also be able to do this. So I got Philips Hue bulbs. I got a crazy deal on them after my parents had given me a gift card. So I switched my lighting over to green and it adds enough light that I don't get the reflective problems on my clothes, like I'm saying, but it does seem to make a huge difference as far as tracking goes. I can walk all over, I can play games and I don't lose tracking. It's it's incredible. So that is my absolute top recommendation as far as making a difference for playing PSVR in your space. Let's play a game or two real quick. Let's see how we're doing with tracking here. I'm setting up my quick cable management solution here. If you didn't see that video, go to the VR Cable Solve video on my channel. I'll leave a link in the description, but you'll see how I designed this to help me keep the cables out of my way when I play.
Look at that. That's something you don't usually get in PSVR without doing all this. You can't usually see your controller sitting on the ground and just grab them. Like, usually you put them on the ground and they are gone. One thing it's not necessarily gonna help your tracking a ton, but it's gonna help your overall gaming experience is get your cables out of the way. If you missed the cable management solution video I did where I explained how I built this tower that keeps the cable suspended, check it out. So the reason I wanted to play some super hot is because it's the one everybody talks about how bad the tracking is and how it's hard to reach around and get everything. So here we go, look at that. We got very little hand wobble, very little. I'm telling you, the green lights make a big difference. And super hot. Super hot! Dead. See, and having this mat here, like I said, really helps you know where you're at. You can reach down to the ground, I can reach up, and I'm not having tracking issues. And I got no cables on me. Right in the dick. Ugh, step back, dodge the punch. Duck, dick shot, dick punch. Oh yeah. Yeah, dead. Oh. oh. Yep, hitting the dick. You didn't expect that, did you? Now it's dropping. I can get all the way down to the ground here and get the gun. Screw you. Screw oh yeah, forgot about you. Oh geez. I can drop all the way down here and go all Boondock Saints style on them. And I can actually use my cover without losing tracking. Oh no. Uh, uh. Yeah. Didn't even need bullets. Die. Uh. No. Shot in the dick. Uh-oh. Ninja block. Ninja block. Ninja block. Yeah! Punched in the dick. Boom. Boom. Oh, jeez. This looks like a problem. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Is that gonna get him? Yes! Headshot! See how much easier it is to kill people, kids, when your tracking actually works? Stop it. Stop it. There's one. Boom. Ah, this game is so great, I can just keep playing it. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good example of what tracking looks like once you've done all of these things. PSVR tracking is so much better than people think it can be. And it can be a lot of fun when games actually work the way they should. So if you're having frustrating tracking issues, you're ready to give up on PSVR, don't do it yet until you at least try these steps because it makes such a huge difference. Super hot, so fun when the tracking works. Okay, well thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate you being here watching the videos and all the new subscribers we've been getting. But I wanna say thank you so much and I will see you in another reality.